Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker Puff wheat and Quaker Puff rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. One king, one, you huskies. Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon, a stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker Puff wheat and Quaker Puff rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Fellas and girls, I'll bet there isn't a single one of you who doesn't like dogs, or that doesn't envy Sergeant Preston, his wonder dog and loyal companion, King. What's more, maybe you've your own dog, who is dear to your heart, or maybe you'd like to own a dog someday. Well, if you like dogs, whatever you do, keep listening. Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, the swell-tasting breakfast cereal shot from guns, brings you an almost unbelievable offer in just a few minutes. The old man was dying. There was no doubt about that. But there was still a vital spark in the gray eyes beneath the bushy eyebrows. He made an impatient gesture with his left hand. Here. Here, Torrance. Push another pillow in back of me so I can sit up and read. Well, of course, Josh. Yeah, how's that? Yeah, it'll, it'll do. Now stand aside so I can see Jenkins. The will's all ready for your signature, Mr. Wilson. Who, who's that standing over in the corner? <clears throat> Tom Langdon, Josh. Torrance said I was to come in and be a witness. Oh, well, all right. <laughs> You you got everything the way I told you, Jenkins? Yes, sir. Do you want me to read it to you? I can still read. Give it to me. Yes, sir. I don't know anything about that niece and nephew of mine, but I made my fortune in the Yukon, and if the Yukon's too good for them, then they can't have any part of it. It's all just as you told me, sir. They must claim their inheritance in person in Dawson before May 31st of next year. Yeah, I see. They'll have to make the winter trek from Skagway. It'll do them good. Show them what their uncle went through. Make them appreciate what they're getting. If the trail's too tough for them, they don't deserve any sourdough money. Yeah. Yeah, well, what's all, what's all this small writing down at the bottom? Oh, that's just in case the Martin boy and girl don't fulfill your terms. It sets up the hospital trust with Mr. Torrance as the executor. I can't read it. Well, it's exactly as we talked about. All right, I'm not interested. If my kin don't deserve the mine, I don't care where it goes. Give me a pen. Here, Here, sir. There. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. For what? You sign right here, Mr. Torrance. I see. Now, Mr. Langdon. All right. You, you don't mind my not leaving you anything, do you, Tom? What do I need with money? <laughs> I thought that's the way you'd feel about it. You'd rather trap than mine. Still, you're about the only friend I've got. Take care of the young ones for me. Hey, I will, Judge. And you do a good job of running the mine for them, Torrance. Why, of course I will. Thank you, Mr. Langdon. Well, that about concludes our business, Mr. Wilson. No doubt about it. You and Torrance clear out. Yes, Mr. Wilson. Tom? Yep? Sit here beside me. And we'll... We'll talk about old times. Yes, yes. It was shortly after that that the old man dropped into a sleep from which he never woke. And the following day, Mike Torrance appeared in Silas Jenkins' law office. Well, just take the precaution of locking the door. Then we can be sure no one will interrupt us. Sit down, Mike. Sit down. Yeah. Are you sure everything's okay? Would you like to see the will? Uh, yes. All right. Here you are. 
Hey, I didn't get much of a chance to look at it while I was signing my name yesterday. <laughs> no, and neither did Mr. Langdon, you can be sure of that. Yeah, but the old man might have caught you up. I made the writing in the last clause very small purposely. And after all, it was very simple, mere matter of leaving out a few words. Mm, the old man had been stronger, though. But we counted on his condition, didn't we? Now, if the boy and girl don't appear in Dawson before the last of May, the mine will go to you. And there's no reason why they should appear. Because, of course, they'll never be notified. <laughs> it's safe to say the property will be yours and mine. I believe I deserve my share. Well, there's still a chance things might go wrong. How? Well, Langdon... He knows the old man didn't intend to leave anything to me. The will is perfectly in order. It can't be broken. Yeah, but what if he gets word to the Martin kids? Well, that was left in my hands. Well, just the Watch same... Watch him by all means, Mike. Make sure he doesn't do anything to interfere with our plans. I will. You can depend on that. But two months later, Torrance paid another visit to Jenkins' office. And this time, his face was twisted with anger. What's the matter with you, Torrance? Everything. That fool of a Johnson. You control yourself. I told him to make sure, to make absolutely sure. Keep your voice down. Now tell me what's happened. You heard Johnson yourself. He said he followed Langdon back to his cabin in the mountains. Of course. Right after the funeral. Well, Langdon didn't stay there. Red Gannon's just back from Skagway, and you saw him get on board the Northern Pride. He's on his way to Seattle. He's here, but now... Wait, wait, you're sure of this? Red saw him! I still say control yourself. There are people passing outside. But he's gone after those cursed kids. He'll bring them back with him. It's a long way from Seattle to Dawson, Mike. Well, it's only the end of March. They'll have plenty of time to make it. There are ways of stopping them. Huh? And Red might be the man to do it. No, we can afford to hire more than one man, Mike. Get half a dozen. Pay them well. To do what? To go to Skagway. To wait there. To watch for Tom Langdon and Ted and Mary Martin. And if they show up, to stop them from getting any farther. Skagway's a rough town. Should be easy to stop them there. And if not, there are 650 miles of the most dangerous trail in the world between Skagway and Dawson. Red and the men you hire will have plenty of opportunity. To kill them? To keep them from reaching here by the end of May. <laughs> we'll just let Red use his own methods. Yeah. He'll do it. I'll offer him a thousand dollars. He's killed men for less than that. The Northern Pride docked at Skagway on the 20th of April. And standing on the deck where they would be the first down the gangplank were Tom Langdon and Ted and Mary Lou Martin. Are we really in the Yukon? Well, not yet, Ted. But I left my team in town. We'll be through White Pass by tomorrow. Then you'll be in the territory. They're getting ready to lower the game. Now, stay close behind me, you two. I don't want to lose you in that crowd on the dock. Oh, don't you worry. The old trapper led the way down the gangplank. Just as he stepped onto a dock, a shot rang up. Oh, oh, Uncle Tom. He's been shot. Help! Help somebody! Uncle Tom. Where are you hit? Oh, my leg. Oh, I'm not done for. Not by a long ways. But I may be laid up for a while. Now, I don't want you to stop here with me. I want you to go on. Why? Why, what are you talking about? Somebody help me lift him. Carry him over to that building. I'll give you a hand with him. Go on. Oh, he's fainted. Right. Easy now. As if we dream of leaving him. It was a week later that Sergeant Preston, on duty at the Northwest Mounted Post at White Pass, saw a dog team struggling up the Come slope toward the summit. Yes, King, I see. Harness is tangled. Come on, boy, we'll straighten it out. I'll tangle up, Ted. We'll have to straighten out the traces. I'll do that. Sergeant Preston. Oh, Tom Langdon. What's the matter with you? Why are you riding the sled? Well, I was shot in the leg down the Skagway. But it's all right now. Hey, I want you to meet Ted and Mary Martin. How do you do, sir? They're Josh Wilson's niece and nephew. They're on the way up to Dawson. But Josh is dead. Uh, yes, I know. I uh, got quite a story to tell you. Oh, I can wait till we get to the customs house. Just let me take over, Ted, and we'll have you there in no time. Make the team behave while I go to work on the harness, King. The team was untangled, and King broke the trail for them up to the custom house. There, Tom was carried inside and made comfortable near the stove. And there, he told his story. I realized there wasn't any mention of the hospital in that will at all. That if Mary and Ted didn't get the mine, Torrance would. 
I'd never liked him, never trusted him. So I just decided to get down to Seattle and bring the kids back myself. Ted, uh, you received no notice of your uncle's death. Not until Uncle Tom arrived. Who shot you down in Skagway, Tom? They couldn't find him. <laughs> well, there was a crowd on the dock. I did see Red Ganyon down there while we were still on deck. And he's been on Torrance's payroll from time to time. You think he may have done it? Well, it's possible. But the important thing is to get these kids to Dawson before the 31st of May. Is it too late, Sergeant? I don't know. You shouldn't have stayed with me, kids. We couldn't leave you alone. There's still a month. Yes, but the trail's in terrible condition. Once you got down to the level of the lakes, the snow's slushy and the ice is rotten. But the lakes haven't broken up yet. No, and if you wait for them to be free of ice and travel by boat all the way, well... There'd be no chance of making it in time. They've got to, Sergeant. Well, just a minute, I'm thinking. Well? It'll be dangerous. What have you got in mind? You'll stay here, Tom. No, no. I can't let them go on alone. I'll go with them instead. Now, listen. We'll travel across the ice on Lake Bennett and Tagish and Marsh Lake until we get to the 50-mile river. There's open water in Miles Canyon. We'll have to portage around it. Yeah? Below the canyon, we'll have to hope the ice will still hold us so we can cross over the left bank. I'll follow the trail along the White Horse Rapids to Lake Labarge. I'll pick up a canoe there. The 30 Mile River's open, so is the Lewis and the Yukon. Well, if you can get to Lake Labarge. If. That's the big question. If the ice will hold us below Miles Canyon. We must get over to the left bank there, or we'll be held up for days. Ted, Mary, how soon can you start? Any time. Right away. As soon as I harness my team, then. Let's go, King. <laughs> we'll continue our story in just a moment. Boy, oh boy, just look at Oh, gee, they're out of this world. Yes, kids, how would you like to own a complete set of 35 different dog picture cards like these? Oh, gosh, would I ever? Oh, me too. They're official challenge of the Yukon dog picture cards. Why, they're better than any trading cards I've ever seen. And they're stiff back. And just feel them. They're the same shiny finish as game cards. And say... Just look at these dogs. Billy, those are real photographs in full color. And every single dog is a real dog. And they're brand new photographs, too. Oh, gosh. I've never seen anything so pretty as this Irish setter. He's champion Charles River Color Sergeant. Voted best in show at the recent 9th Annual International Kennel Club Dog Show in Chicago. Boy, I like that Irish wolfhound. Billy, did you know this breed is the world's biggest dog? Standing on his legs, he reaches over six feet high. Here, look. On the back of every card, Sergeant Preston gives a description of each dog. Oh, gosh, it says on this card that the Chihuahua weighs as little as one pound. Why, you could hold him right in the palm of your hand. Hey, look it. Here's King. Gosh, what a dog. Oh, boy, what I would give to own a dog like that. <laughs> well, kids, it's so easy to get these Challenge of the Yukon dog picture cards. Nothing to it, and they don't cost you a single extra penny. Look, here's all you do. Get to your grocer. Buy Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. Oh, gosh, they're my favorite cereal. Well, inside each package, you'll find two cards like these. Two cards? Right, Billy. Not one, but two dog picture cards. Oh, gee, if we got two packages, one of each kind, we'd have four different cards. Right, Sandra, quick as a wink. Boy, I'm wasting no time. I'm starting my collection right now. Yes, there's no waiting, no delay, nothing to send in, no money, no box tops. Simply go to your grocer. Ask for Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice. Inside each package, get two keen dog picture cards. There are 35 different cards in all. Get the entire set. They're new, they're different, and you can get them only with Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice. Save them, trade them. It's easy, it's fun. Now to continue our story. Half an hour after Sergeant Preston had made his decision to escort the Martin boy and girl to Dawson, the little party was on the trail. Mary rode the sled, and Ted helped the sergeant control his descent from the top of the pass. King was working as a loose lead, breaking the trail for the team. Night had fallen by the time they reached the shores of Lake Bennett. Oh, looking! Oh, no. You gonna make camp here, Sergeant? Only long enough to eat. You tired, Mary? No, Sergeant. Just a little cold. I got a fire started. It was spring when we left home. 
now it's winter again. It's the beginning of spring up here. Notice how soft the snow is? Yes, but the lake's still frozen. The ice isn't to be trusted. I wouldn't attempt crossing it without King in the lead. However, it's better at night than during the day, and that's why we're going to keep on. There'll be a moon and the northern lights will rest in the morning. Now, uh, how about helping me get some wood, Dad? Sure thing. Oh, of course, King. You can come along, boy. Supper was eaten, and as the moon rose, they started out again across the frozen surface of the lake. It was nothing like travel during the middle of the winter when King would have set a steady six-mile-hour pace directly ahead. Now he moved slowly, testing every foot of ice, realizing that it must not only carry his own weight, but the weight of the sled and the men behind him. Sometimes he kept close to the shore. At others, he avoided it. Often he reversed his course swiftly as an ominous cracking and rumbling explained the reason. Oh. All right, Marie. But it sounds as if the ice were breaking up. Behind us, not ahead. The great dog brought them through, across Lake Bennett, across Lake Tagish and Marsh Lake, and on to the 50-mile river. But what would have been a day's travel in winter took them nearly a week. And then, as they were nearing Miles Canyon, disaster struck. What's the matter, boy? He's stopping. He looks as if he wants to head for shore, but he won't. Why not? There's your answer. The ice is cracking up ahead of us. It's cracking up all around us. Now don't try to move. King knows what's best. Daddy does it. That's open water ahead, Sergeant. I can see water behind us, too. Oh, this piece of ice we're on is moving. Steady. It's thick enough to hold us. We're going to break up sooner or later. Look at the way the current's taking us. Toward the shore. Yes, and the ice is still solid there. We'll break up when we hit it. I'll have to move fast, Ted. Watch, King, and be ready to give me a hand with that sled. We're going to hit! The ice floe ground into the solid shore ice. King and the dogs leaped forward. Oh, Ted! The sergeant and Ted put their shoulders to the sled, and a moment later they had reached solid ground on the bank. Oh, dear. That was a close one. The king slipped for once. Oh, no, Ted. He's been trying to reach this bank ever since we entered the river. Well, why? What's the matter with the left bank? Look ahead there. See the cliffs on either side? That's Miles Canyon. The only land trail around it's on this side. He knew that? He knows the Yukon Vale better than I do. Well, now what do we do? Rest a little while, then Ted and I'll pack our supplies on our backs. You'll have to make the portage on foot, Mary. Well, I'm not tired at all. What's beyond the portage? We have to cross the river again. But how? You must hope the ice hasn't gone below the canyon. Oh, but it must have. No, not necessarily. The river doesn't flow as swiftly down below. But the sooner we get there, the better. The portage was made. And when they stood on the banks of the river once again below the canyon, the sergeant tested the ice. It's covered with water, sergeant. Yes, about a foot deep, and the ice is rotten. I honestly don't know. I'll have to leave it up to King. How about it, boy? Will it hold us? Shall we go on? On, King? The great dog understood. It was a familiar command, but this time it was phrased as a question, and he was ready with the answer. He started across the river, and the team followed him as a matter of course. Here we go. You first, Mary. All right. We got a fire lighted as soon as we hit the other side. It was a dangerous crossing. The ice was rotten, but they reached the other side of the river. It would have been impossible half an hour later, for as they were drying their mucklucks and warming their feet, the breakup came. There she goes. Wow. Are we lucky? We're lucky to have King with us. Good work, fella. I guess you know who's really in charge here, don't you? You'll take care of us, won't you, King? They followed the trail along the banks of the White Horse Rapids to Lake LaBarge and the Northwest Mounted Post on its shores. There, the sergeant arranged to leave his sled and his team and to borrow a canoe. But the constable in charge of the post had some disturbing news. I wish we'd known about this day before yesterday. Known about what? That Red Gagnon was suspected of shooting Langdon in Skagway. No real evidence against him. No, but at least we could have held him for questioning. Held him? That's what I mean. He and five other men have been camping near the end of the lake. They bought a boat, and when the ice and 30 Mile broke up, they started out. Day before yesterday. Well, if Tom's guess was correct, and Torrance has hired Red to keep Ted and Mary from reaching Dawson and He time... may be waiting for you somewhere along the river. You may run into an ambush. Could be. We'll be warned, though. What? How? King's traveling with us. Ganyon would like nothing better than to put a bullet through you. We'll keep a sharp lookout, won't we, King? <laughs> the following morning, the sergeant and King, Ted and Mary, climbed into their canoe and started down the 30-mile river. The current was swift, and big black boulders rose menacingly above the surface of the water. 
Only the sergeant's strength and skill kept the fragile craft from crashing into them. Oh! There's some more rocks on your left, Sergeant. Yes, I see. You keep that rifle ready and watch the bank. Remember what I told you about Red Canyon. I'm watching. <laughs> on and on they raced with the stream. The days passed. The Lewis was left behind, and now they had reached the broad sweep of the Yukon River. Past Selkirk and on to Stewart. But time was growing short, and the sergeant and Ted paddled hard from dawn to dusk. It was the 27th of May, then the 28th, then the 29th. And when they made camp that night, the sergeant knew it would be the last time he would have a chance to sleep until Dawson was reached. Ted and Mary might be able to sleep in the canoe, but he would have to keep paddling steadily if Dawson were to be reached by midnight of the 31st. King was sleeping near his master, but as always, even though his eyes were closed, his senses seemed to be alert to danger. He suddenly woke up, growling. There was nothing to be seen beyond the campfire except the canoe drawn up on the beach. But King knew there was someone close, some stranger. Then the great dog saw a shadowy figure moving swiftly toward the canoe. King leaped up and raced toward the water's edge. There was a flash of steel in the moonlight. The man was carrying an axe. He raised it high and was about to smash the fragile hull when King hit him. The axe was knocked from the man's grasp and slid down to the water's edge. King! What is it, Sergeant? What's happened? Someone down by our canoe. King's caught him. Take him off me! Take him off! All right, King. I've got him covered. Get up, you. At the sergeant's command, the great dog allowed the man to get up. Then he raced down to the water to retrieve the axe. Uh, I was just walking along. I wasn't doing anything. What's that you've got, King? An axe. It isn't mine. Don't lie. March. Up to the campfire. I wasn't doing anything, Sergeant. King didn't give you a chance. March. Who is it, Sergeant? His name is Steve Sykes. I'm putting him under arrest for shooting Tom Langdon. Oh, you know better than that, Sergeant. You know it wasn't me. You were with Red Gunyon when he fired the shot. Yeah, yeah, but that doesn't make me responsible. Where is Red? He went on. And left you behind to try to stop us? I didn't know you were with these kids, Sergeant. Answer me. You were left behind to try to stop us? I wasn't going to hurt you with the kids any. But you knew if you put a hole in that canoe, it would be worth a fortune to Mike Torrance. I don't know anything about Mike Torrance. Steve, you've got just one chance to keep out of jail, and that's to come clean. All right, Sergeant. I'll tell you anything you want to know, anything I can tell you. The first thing is I lied about Red. He hasn't gone on? No, camp's on the point in the woods about a half mile from here. We saw you stopping this afternoon. He sent me to wreck your boat, that's true, but if I didn't manage it, why... Well, tomorrow you'd never have got past the point. So Red is still ready to commit murder to stop us. Yeah. You're going to lead me to his camp, Steve. All right. That's the way you want it. You want me to come too, Sergeant? No, Ted. Wait here for ten minutes. And I want you and Mary to get in the canoe and paddle for the other side of the river. Get as close to the bank as you can and let the current carry you down past the point. This man said they'd shoot at us. By the time you're opposite the point, I'll either have made my arrest or Red and his men will be so occupied with the woods behind them, they won't be able to watch the river. Do you think there'll be a fight? There may be. Maybe that Red will win. But even if he does, you and Mary will be out of his reach. If you keep at it, you'll make Dawson in time. We will. But you, Sergeant... This is all part of my job, Mary. One, Steve. Quiet, King. Our only chance is to take them by surprise. <laughs> Two days passed. And at ten minutes of twelve on the night of the 31st, Mike Torrance and Silas Jenkins were together in the lawyer's office on Front Street, preparing to celebrate their inheritance. How about a drink, Mike? I'll wait till twelve before I drink... <clears throat> Why, you don't think anything can go wrong now? I'll wait. <laughs> I wonder when we'll hear about the accident. Uh, what accident? Why, the one that Red arranged. wonder how he managed it. Uh, who's that? No idea. It could be Red. Take a look out the window and see before you unlock the door. Right. Well? It's a young fellow and a girl. Who are they? I don't know. I never saw them before. But suppose it's a Martins. I'll let them in. Are you Silas Jenkins? Yes. I'm Ted Martin. And this is my sister, Mary. How do you do? Well, how'd you get here? Why, by canoe. Aren't you going to ask us in? Yes, yes, come in. Come in. You, uh, you don't have to be told why we're here, Mr. Jenkins. Uh, I'm Mike Torrance. It's too bad you're late. Well, what do you mean? That clock says five minutes of twelve. Oh, the clock is slow. Yeah, here's the right time. My watch. Five minutes past twelve. What does yours say, Silas? Uh, 
Five minutes past, of course. It is too bad that you should have come all this way for nothing. You're certainly proving that Tom Langdon was right. Right? That you're crooks, the pair of you. You've done everything in your power to keep us from getting here on time. And now that you've lost the game, you're still trying to cheat us. But we haven't lost. You'll find that out in court. I'll take a look at your watch, Jenkins. Uh, you haven't had time to set it ahead. Let go of me. There. Look at it, Mary. Five minutes out. We'll see what the court has to say to that. You're covered, mister. Oh, so you realize the bluff won't work. There was no one out in the street. No one who could have seen them come in here, Silas. Same thought occurred to me. What are you going to do? Kill us? You're going to disappear, young man. You and your sister... You'll never be heard of again. I wonder if you have the nerve to shoot. You'll find out when the right time comes. Can't do it here. Of course not. I'll take him down to the river. Now, come on, let's get started. We'd better not argue with that gun, Mary. Come on. Oh, well, hello, King. And the sergeant. Oh, hey, hey, sergeant. Fancy meeting you here. Sergeant Preston. Yes, Torrance. I'll take that gun. Sergeant, did you hear them? I heard everything. Torrance? You're under arrest, and so are you, Jenkins. What's the charge? I have no gun. You didn't hear me make any threat? Red Ganyon's in jail, and he's confessed that you and Torrance hired him. That makes you an accessory to attempted murder. Attempted murder? Langdon? Yes, but he's all right now. And there's also an item of conspiracy to defraud. Langdon's testimony will clinch that. Jenkins, you and Torrance are going to jail for a long, long time. This case is closed. <laughs> In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Friday's adventure. Fellas and girls, you all know that Yukon King is the greatest husky in the North Country. You know he's gentle yet strong, and always at his master, Sergeant Preston's side when danger threatens. But say, do you know what King really looks like? And wouldn't you like to have a beautiful full-color picture of King? And what's more, have it on a real stiff-backed trading card? Well, then, waste no time. Start today. Collect official challenge of the Yukon Dog Picture Cards. There are 35 different cards in all. Each features a famous breed of dog. Remember, you now get at no extra cost two. That's two of these dog picture cards inside each package of delicious Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. These cards are that easy to get. Save them, trade them, collect them all. Start now. Ask for Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. The breakfast cereal shot from guns. Listen Friday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of the Skagway Mail. On the Skagway Mail sled pulled into the police post at Indian River, the driver was lying across the mail sacks, wounded and unconscious. And trying to find the men who had shot him, I had only one clue, an oddly marked footprint. It led me into a trap, a trap that nearly cost me my life. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure... Friday. This is Jay Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. So long. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. <laughs>